Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. And a heavyweight news mashup video today, starting with the Deontay Wilder and Luis Ortiz rematch, which of course is on November 23rd. And that promotion has received a boost through the first installment of the Wilder vs. Ortiz PBC fight camp. So that has debuted to an audience on Fox with an average of over 2.2 million viewers during its first showing. So a four-part series three weeks to go so that will get some eyeballs on this fight on November 23rd and this promotion for this rematch does need it because heading into this one nowhere near the same sort of buzz and hype for the first time around but part of that is because Wilder has already beaten Ortiz and relatively conclusively knocking Ortiz out in March 2018 but this promotion will be good for the fight and could potentially lead to a few more pay-per-view buys this will be Deontay Wilder's second pay-per-view following his first against Tyson Fury which was in December 2018. The numbers which it will draw hard to say at the moment but it is expected by many fans and pundits to be less than the about 325,000 buys for that fight with Fury. Moving on to Tyson Fury, who says he could potentially stay in the WWE. He says, I could stay. Who knows? It depends on how much I like it on the night. We will make a decision afterwards. This keeps me active. It keeps me in the gym and gives me something to focus on. And in terms of those sorts of comments, I guess fans will be asking the question, does he mean that he will stay on for another fight in 2019 or stay in the WWE longer term? Or potentially, could that end up scuppering a potential fight with Deontay Wilder in February 2020? Obviously, Wilder has to get past Ortiz first and Tyson Fury has to remain injury free. And if he's going into a WWE fight with Braun Strowman later this month, who knows what could happen and whether Fury could get injured. But in terms of Fury entering the WWE, it is great promotion for him in the United States and will help, no doubt, with the potential rematch with Wilder in early 2020, should that come to pass. Joseph Parker's manager, David Higgins, is confident that a fight with Derek Chisora for his fighter, Joseph Parker, can be rescheduled and hopefully for early 2020. He's told Sky Sports the onus is on Eddie Hearn to hopefully make it happen. He's a busy man, he's got a lot on, but the whole world wants to see it. Joseph signed with Eddie as his promoter because he has a large volume of events and he's the best in the world. Joseph is ready and willing and just needs a date and a venue. Joseph will be travelling home back to New Zealand on Sunday, but yes, of course, he will enter into talks. That's why we're in business. February at the earliest, I understand it. To fight in February, Joe would have to enter camp at the very big beginning of January. And that would likely mean that a deal for a Chisora and Parker fight would likely need to be sewn up in December, well ahead of training camp beginning, because Higgins has made it clear in public he doesn't want Joseph Parker having a short amount of time for a training camp. Will that fight actually come to pass? Well, we shall see. It almost came off twice in 2019. Parker pulling out the second time because of a suspected spider bite. Chisora has since built his profile again, beating David Price, a good win over Artis Bilka this year. Maybe he has other opportunities on the plate at the moment to consider. Joseph Parker likes that fight, and in terms of the style matchup, it may actually suit him to box Chisora, who has struggled with movers in the past. But in terms of Parker, on a social media, he was asked, well, when are you going to be fighting? Who do you want to fight next? And he said, don't know yet, but I'll fight anyone. Just want to lock in a fight soon. And then someone asked him again, well, Daniel Dubois would be a good fight. And he said, yep, that will be a good fight, bro. In terms of a Dubois fight, I'm not expecting that to happen. He's in the wrong promotional tent. I would expect that Eddie Hearn, Parker's promoter, will match him off against someone in the matchroom stable. And Parker, clearly with his manager David Higgins, is targeting Chisora. But has that opportunity come and gone? We shall soon see. Meanwhile, fellow New Zealand heavyweight Junior Farr has been confirmed to face Devin Vargas that had previously been reported by New York Fights. So that has been confirmed for November the 15th. Farr is going to be fighting in Utah. He's the main event on a Lou DeMella promoted card with Hemia Hill, another New Zealand heavyweight and unbeaten prospect, as the co-main event. 
Lucas Brown has revealed that his fight for November 9th has fallen over with another opponent pulling out. Here he is. Okay, so the real quick version of this bull is um, my opponent, Mororo, who was supposed to be for November 9, uh, has injured his hand. So I've been told it's now been pushed back to December 20, which is great because it's still for belts and everything else. But that pretty much means that I won't be fighting November 9. Uh, so that's six weeks I've been in, sorry, six months I've been in camp without a f***ing fight because I keep getting f***ed around by people. So I apologise for anyone who has bought tickets, etc. But I may be on the card if I get a last minute opponent. Um, but let's not keep our fingers too crossed with that one. So I may be on November 9 card if we can get a last minute opponent. If not, it'll be pushed back to Sydney December 20 against Mororo for a couple of belts uh, and some rankings. So that's about all I can ask for. I apologise, but that's Aussie boxing, isn't it? And just quickly, working to the box rec schedule, seeing what's coming up this weekend, it's another relatively light weekend in terms of heavyweight matchups of note. But we do have two prospects who've been working with Anthony Joshua in his training camp in action this weekend. So we have Elbon Pervazaj, the unbeaten German who's currently 12-0. He will be facing Dusan Vilatic. That is going to be on a card in Germany. Here is the promo poster on screen for that. Another unbeaten prospect that is... Timothy Moten. He is going to be fighting on a card in Louisville, Kentucky, USA. Uh, according to BoxRec, his opponent is still TBA. He's currently 5-0. He's been one of Anthony Joshua's main sparring partners. Uh, he has been in camp for a few weeks with the former unified champion who is preparing for his rematch with Andy Ruiz Jr. later this year. And finally, we have Martin Bacoli. He's going to be on a matchroom card in Manchester fighting the durable journeyman Rodney Hernandez. So at short notice because Bacoli was only just added to that card he only fought what a week or so ago uh, he is going to be facing a relatively decent and durable journeyman in Rodney Hernandez Hernandez has a record of 13, 8 and 2, but that probably belies his actual talent level. He's actually had a couple of decent wins on his resume. He fought FA a Jagba, was stopped on his feet, but took a Jagba until that point in a Jagba's career, the most rounds of his professional career to that point. Also, he recently fought a Joey DeWeco. That was a decision loss against Deweco, but if you saw that fight, you would have seen it was a relatively competitive and close fight, much closer than the scorecards actually showed. So Rodney Hernandez at a few days notice for Martin Bacoli, that is actually a decent sort of test for him. I expect Bacoli to win. And if Bacoli can be one of these guys that can stop Hernandez, who's very durable, it's a good look for him. And Bacoli obviously looking for a bigger and better fight. He has been calling out Daniel Dubois, so we shall see where to from here. But Bacoli says he's finished his work and he's looking forward to Saturday night. He says, here we are coming. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often, hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.